Welcome to this Scratch tutorial, and this time uh, we will try to make a game together. So let's get started. Now the first thing that we want to be able to do is to actually control this cat over here. And as a matter of fact, I think I want to rather use something different than a cat. So I'll just remove it using the remove tool over here and clicking the cat. I will then add a new sprite using this button. And I'd like it to be an animal. So let's say, for instance, a dinosaur. It's perfect. And I think the dinosaur is slightly too big. So I will actually use this shrink tool over here and press the dinosaur a few times to get the right size. That's about right, I think. Um, and next, I want to be able to control the dinosaur. So I'm going to over go over to events here and actually drag in when space is pressed. But instead of using space, I would rather use uh, the right arrow. And I'd also want a second control for the left arrow as well. And now, when I move the dinosaur um, towards the right, I'll use the move 10 steps. And now, when I press the right mouse button, we will have the dinosaur move to the right. And then I will copy this thing by using duplicate, by right-clicking on it to get this menu and duplicate it. And then just add it to the left arrow. And then I will make this into a negative value so that it goes the other direction. A problem now is that when I walk back and forth, you can see that the dinosaur stays looking in one direction. So we want to change that. So I'll go over to looks and actually, uh, well, actually motion and take the point in direction and put it just below here, below the right arrow. And now you can see that it says 90 here, and that's actually the degrees of the dinosaur. So 90 means that it's pointing to the right, whereas if I duplicate this and put it under here, I want it to point it into the left. So I then go to minus 90, with this pointing to the left. And now when I walk to the left and right, you can see that it's actually turning, but, well, this is not quite right. Uh, the dinosaur is turned upside down. Now the reason for this is that actually it's not well defined how something should turn when you're rotating it inside of a video game. Because if this dinosaur was instead something that you saw from above, uh, such as, let's say, if we give this another costume, um, a cat seen from the top, actually this would not look weird at all. But it's only with the dinosaur that it actually looks really weird. Now I don't want to have the cat, but I just want to demonstrate what it looks like. So really it's not well defined how it should turn, but in Scratch you get the possibility to tell the computer how you want it to turn instead. So what I need to do is to take one of these, set the rotation style, and set that to right and left, which is the sort of rotation style we want to have. And then I want to pick one of these when the green flag is clicked and add that on top of it. So this means that when I start the game by pressing the green flag, the rotation mode will actually be set to the right thing. And now we can see that it's actually still not really correct, because pressing to the left will actually cause the dinosaur to go to the right. And this is because while in the beginning it was the right thing to make it go in a negative distance, causing it to go to the left, when it's actually rotated the other way around, this doesn't work anymore. Because now it's actually facing the other direction. So going a negative direction will actually cause it to go the same direction as the other button. So I change that back to 10. And we can now see that it's actually walking back and forth. But there's still one weird thing about this. You see, when I'm walking to the left and then I push the right mouse button, it actually turns after it has moved. It's pretty hard to see, but it's actually there. And this is because we, of course, pointed in a direction after we have taken 10 steps. So the better way to do this is actually to put this point in direction in front of the move. And now we can see that the dinosaur is moving correctly. Now we want something to watch out for, something to avoid. 
So I'll go right into creating a new sprite and I'll pick a dangerous animal. Let's say a bat. I'll put it right here. And I want it to be slightly smaller as well, so I'll shrink it a little bit. Now I want the bat to patrol this area up and down. So what I'll do is that the bat should always uh, step or move 10 steps and it should be facing the, um, let's see, it should be pointing downwards and it should do this at the start of the game. But we actually want this to continue doing that once the game has started. So I'll go to control and pick out a forever loop. And I'll take the 10 steps and put it inside of it. And then I'll just point it in the direction in the start of the game. So starting it now will actually cause the bat to go downwards. Now as you can see, the bat, well, when it actually goes down to the bottom, it can't go any further down. And that causes it to be stuck down there. So we actually want it to be able to bounce around and go the other way. And that's when we get to sensing, because there is a pretty good one here. Uh, a thing which senses whether it's actually outside the screen. Let's see if we can find it. Um, distance 2, maybe? No. Oh, here we have it. If it is on the edge, it should bounce. And I'll just add that just below the 10 steps. And now if we try it, we'll see that the bat is going upside down. Um, now, the next thing we want to do is to have a goal, goal of the game. And this will be to actually collect a fourth item. A third item, I mean. And I'd like to pick this from uh, perhaps things and perhaps it would be some bananas like this now what we want to do is to be able to get to the bananas without touching the bat so let's check whether we are touching the bat or not for this I'll go into the bat again and this time except for moving 10 steps and check whether it's at the edge and then bounce I will also add an operator or I mean a control event which is an if-then, I will then go into sensing and pick this out, touching, and put it inside the if-then. Then I will change this into dinosaur and put it inside the forever loop. So what we have now is that it's always checking whether it's touching the dinosaur. And if it actually does that, the game is over. So I will go over to uh, control and pick out a stop all which is similar to pushing the red button over here. So let's see if this works now. Ah, damn, I got caught. Let's try it again. Ah, when I stop the game now, you can see that the dinosaur is actually in the same position as when we last played it. And I don't really want that. I want it to restart at the starting position when I'm pre pressing the green flag. I can do this by going to the dinosaur and to this event, where I'm actually checking whether I'm pressing the green flag, I'll add the position for where I want the dinosaur to start. This would be a good spot. Now I only need to check what the X and Y coordinate is at that spot. So I'll hold the cursor over here, and I'll see that it's minus 165 minus 1. So now I just need to go into motion and pick the go to position. And I'll just change that to minus 165 and maybe 0. And now if I, if I, for instance, ended up here, when I started the game, I would still start over there. That's really good. Let's see if I can get past this bat. And uh, barely. Anyway, that's the beginning of making your own game. Now I think you should get over and try to see what you can come up with.